So the question says the work function of a potassium is some volume. And there's some vocabulary here that you should understand from your reading of the textbook section. I will review a little bit of that right now, but uh, you know, you should read the section. And here, the most important thing is the idea that, um, idea that uh, light is made up of photons or that there's a, such a thing, or that light has a particle nature. So when you have, this is the kind of classic uh, setup for photoelectric effect experiment. You have some metals conducting surface from which electrons can be ejected somehow, and you have light shining on it. And the textbook section talks about how the features in, and oh, and as the light is shining, uh, people have been doing this experiment for a long time. They find that electrons get ejected from the surface sometimes. And there are different experimental parameters they can vary and so on. And um, the textbook section goes into how, when you try to describe this phenomenon in terms of the electromagnetic wave of the light, that there are some features that you can't quite explain. It's not, it's tantalizingly uh, unsatisfactory because it seems so close, but you can't quite get there. And this is the work that Einstein got his Nobel Prize for. He postulated, he guessed that, I guess uh, you could have finessed this wording. He said, well, the energy of the light, it comes in discrete units that when the light interacts with this matter, it could only this it could only exchange of an amount of energy that's quantized in the units of Planck's constant times frequency. And this particular relationship, Einstein isn't the first one who came up with it. In fact, Max Planck used it in his earlier explanation of black body radiation. That's where the name Planck's constant comes from. So with that uh, re revision of the picture, re really how you would describe this collision as is uh, some particle of light that we call photon coming in, striking the surface. And as the photon um, collides with the things on the surface, it might collide with some, um, with some electron that's near the surface. And through the collision, the photon will give off some energy to the electron. And depending on the energy of the photon, um, it might give off enough energy to the electron that uh, it could escape the surface. And in that context, the phrase work function refers to the binding energy of the electrons that are least tightly bound to the surface. Um, I guess with the bulk material. So, so with that revision of the physical picture, you can um, write down a really simple expression that really only relies on the uh, idea of conservation of energy. So from conservation of energy, you can say this. The, you can say that energy in um, that, that, that's the um, energy coming from the photon, uh, Planck's constant times frequency, is equal to energy out. Um, uh, energy in is equal to, yeah. I, so energy at the initial is, uh, I guess, energy final, not energy out, but energy final. So, um, so, Oh, oh, so I have to be careful in how I write this. So the in the final picture, the photon's gone. You don't have a photon anymore. You do have an electron that has been ejected that's going to have some kinetic energy. And I forgot one thing in the description of the initial energy, which is that if this electron is bound to the surface, then it actually has less than zero energy. It has a negative potential energy. Um, the, with the, the, the reference for zero potential energy being set when the electron is unbound. So I need to say the initial energy is the photon's energy minus the magnitude of the binding energy um, that describes how tightly the electron is bound to the surface. 
So this is a work function. So when the question tells you that um, the value of the work function is this, it's telling you value of this parameter phi. So, okay, uh, question A, it asks, what is the longest wavelength of radiation that can eject a photoelectron from potassium? Um, longest wavelength, oh, um, so this is where you should have remembered <laughs> that um, speed of light is a frequency times wavelength or wavelength is equal to speed of light divided by frequency. So there's this inverse relationship between wavelength and frequency. So longest wavelength will mean uh, lowest frequency. So lowest energy. So looking at this expression here, oh, I think all it's asking for is what is the minimum amount of uh, photon energy that will be needed so that electron will be ejected. The smallest value kinetic energy can be is zero, uh, where electron barely escapes the surface of the the, the potassium. So, so I would just uh, set this equal to zero, and solve for frequency. Frequency is uh, work function divided by Planck's constant, and uh, I can put this in into the expression for wavelength. So this would be the, the minimum frequency of photon needed. And from that, you can get the uh, maximum wavelength that is still short enough to eject the photoelectron. That would be, let me look at the C divided by F min or um, plugging in this, it's a Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by work function. Um, I got this far. Let me just plug in the numbers. I'm going to do this on Wolfram Alpha so that I don't have to look up any constant. Um, I guess if I do if I do look up Planck's constant in the electron volt unit, um, this is actually pretty easy to do. But uh, let me just uh, illustrate the Planck's constant in electron volt units, and then I'll let Wolfram Alpha do the actual calculation. So you can uh, Planck's constant. So. I guess in the basic SI units, it will be given in joule second. So that might be the first number that you look up um, with the Planck's constant. But really useful form of a Planck's constant is this one in the electron volt units. Because so often in quantum mechanics, electron volt is really useful unit of energy. So when you express press Planck's constant in the electron volt unit, by which I mean electron volt times a second, um, some of the units will nicely cancel out and the numerical calculation will be nice. <laughs> now, when you're doing on uh, doing the calculation on Wolfram Alpha, it kind of doesn't matter. So I'll do Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by, um, I don't remember work function, was it? 2.24 EV. 2.24 EV. I think it'll understand the EV. Um, so, yep, that's my longest wavelength. Oh, um, so just doing the conversion in my head from 10 to minus 7 meters to nanometers, or looking at this, <laughs> 554 nanometers. 554. And uh, I hope uh, you have enough um, uh, knowledge of physics trivia that you remember the visible wavelength is from 400 to 700 nanometers, about that range. This is a smack in the middle of it. I think this is green light, so it should be visible. Yeah, so that's it. Uh, I, I guess I you know, took the longer run went through the whole lecture. And I think uh, it's a, uh, um, this is useful because, um, in understanding photoelectric effect, the hardest thing is um, grasping that the foot light, which we are used to treating as wave, is now going to be treated like a particle. But as we are treating it like a particle, we are not giving up its wave properties. We still talk about frequency of light. That wouldn't make any sense if we are giving up on the idea that light is wave. Light is still wave. 
it just uh, happens to interact in a way that is more suitable for how particles interact. 